Welcome to Pros from the Underground, coming to you from my basement in northern Michigan, where I read, write, think, and say things. Tonight, it's just me again. I hope you saw the previous episode, my interview with Mary Kay Zaravleff, a great novelist. I've got more interviews lined up and ready to go. Those will be coming to you very soon. But tonight, I wanted to talk briefly about protagonists and antagonists in fiction. I'm calling the episode Tender Monsters, and I hope that makes sense shortly. Let's start this way. Imagine the politician in the world that you hate the most. The person you despise more than any element in the universe. And then imagine some evening you find out that that person runs off under cover of darkness from Capitol Hill and goes off and feeds the poor. And that person goes to a place with a demographic typically that we wouldn't associate with his, her politics. In other words, I won't say names, but that person goes to Detroit or to rural Kansas or to Manhattan or Iowa, someplace you wouldn't normally think. At the very least, when you hear this news, you would think, Really? You would have to retool. You'd grapple with that new information. And that retooling, that grappling, is essential for fiction writers. So tonight I'm, I'm going to make a case for complexity in characters. Characters that don't fall easily into ideological, aesthetic, or ethical categories. But before I get into that, I will admit that quite often, Often enough, we need some purely bad actors, some bad, bad antagonists, those with no redeeming qualities, with no gray areas. We have them in, in literary history. Let's say, for instance, Ahab. There's no redeeming quality to Ahab. We don't learn somewhere along the way that he has an affinity for kittens. Same thing with the Pharaoh from Exodus or Pap from Huck Finn or Nathan Price from Poisonwood Bible, Petal from the Shipping News, Anne Boleyn from Bringing Up the Bodies, Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men. That dude is not petting kittens on his spare time as far as we know. The Bank from Grapes of Wrath. What the heck? The Wicked Witch from whichever story you like. These are purely bad antagonists, and they have a part to play. They're a force that the protagonist has to counter or flee, and that's important. But I would also argue that in those cases, the protagonists are somehow complex. The, the protagonist has a grayness, an ethical or aesthetic or ideological or something psychological uh, nuance that makes the, the story more complex. In other words, we fiction writers have to be aware if we have a purely bad or purely good character, that purity has to serve the story. And if not, I say, why not go for the gray? So I'm gonna make a case for complexity. Across literary genres, I think writers want audiences to feel complex emotions, to think in new ways, to be surprised at their own thinking, their own responses. Complexity comes when a person, place, or thing has to be reconsidered, when the story forces a reconsideration, when something doesn't fit squarely inside of a designated category. Whenever we can reveal the light in darkness, Shadows within the light, the greed of angels, pity for demons, sympathy for the devil. We're in some interesting intellectual and aesthetic place. Most importantly, I think complexity begets writing. In other words, if our characters are more gray, less easy to put into a category, we have to work harder as writers to call that complexity forward. I carry around characters in my head uh, long after I've put the book down that are complicated, that defy easy categorization. Thomas Cromwell in Mantell's 
trilogy. There are a million reasons to read that trilogy over and over. And I think Cromwell's complexity is one of those reasons. Uh, also, I was thinking about a, a, a very short novel. I think it's probably a novella uh, by Paolo Giordano, who, whose first novel was The Solitude of Prime Numbers. Great novel. His second book uh, was this, this short thing called Like Family. Really interesting, primarily, I think, because of the, the character's complexity. Um, the, prote the narrator and his spouse are, are complex. They're, they're increasingly difficult to get one's arms around. Uh, I also was looking on my bookshelf and I came across Tom Parada's uh, Little Children, which is, um, ah, the characters are, again, hard to get one's arms around. They're all complex, gray, ethically compromised, um, even the person we might consider the antagonist um, becomes increasingly more difficult to put into a category. Uh, or, or Ben Fountain's uh, Billy Lynn's long halftime walk. Talk about a crew of complex gray characters. And once again, I just want to throw out a, a novel. I hope you don't mind me hammering, repeating a novel from the first episode, Toni Morrison's Jazz. There are a million reasons to read that novel over and over. And one of them is the, the difficulty the narrator has in managing the characters she dis, she's describing, the, the complexity, their goodness and badness. What do you do with all of those dimensions? It's so worth reading for that reason alone. Such characters, I think, require our time and energy. We have to carry them around because we don't know what to do with them at the first blush. We have to think about them because they bleed outside of categories. They provoke a bundle of feelings. And here's a little rhetorical theory. I think reading them, spending time with them, multiple pages with them, is alluring. I think in some ways it might even be an act of rebellion. And that is what keeps readers quietly reading at night. So here are some thoughts for writers, some ways to think about your protagonists and your antagonists. Watch what happens when your protagonists are slightly harder to like and your antagonists are slightly harder to hate. Watch what happens when disgust for whomever is spiced with intrigue or attraction. And specifically, here's a thought, rather than, I don't know, uh, for your antagonist, a stepfather who's a mincing pedophile, what about a stepfather who's a pretty nice guy but insists on cooking every night and let's say he burns the food and over spices and then gets sad and dejected and crabby if not, if everyone doesn't love it. That's an interesting antagonist. Or imagine that the heartless seeming heteronormative CEO dude is actually tender with those with less power when the door is closed. And yet he still heads up a company that say does terrible things to the world. Interesting antagonist. Or what if the otherwise dismissive stepmother is stowing away cash so that her stepchildren have a college fund? Interesting antagonist. Or let's think about protagonist. What if she is not strong at all, but is so weak that she has to lie about herself? And what if she knows this? And what if she is, again, your protagonist? That's an interesting problem. Or what if he gets along well with others only because he isn't honest with people because he generally doesn't like to be around them? Interesting protagonist. Or what if your antagonist is the nicest person in the novel? What if she's simply in the way? Again, an interesting problem. In short, consider how you might make your antagonist out of a situation instead of some deep, nasty character flaw. It wouldn't mean like that that character is somehow two-dimensional. It might even mean that the character is fully human, partly good, partly bad, hopeful, tender, dismissive in some quiet ways. So here are my final thoughts. In everyday life, 
If we look beyond our ideological fences, we find quite often that the person who was supposed to be, for instance, really thoughtful about economic justice turns out is just another victim to greed. Or that the person who was the powerhouse who was going to come along and save an industry, eh, pretty dim-witted and couldn't get it done. That happens all the time in everyday life. So if you're a fiction writer and you ever catch yourself complaining, gee, uh, why don't people read fiction? They do, by the way. But if you're thinking that, the answer could very well be because fiction writers sometimes get more boring than reality in that they, we, sometimes fall victim to categories, ideological, aesthetic, ethical categories that aren't complicated enough. So I say stop it. When in doubt, go for the gray. Make your protagonist and your antagonist fit less nicely into categories that have 